Hello, hello. Hello, Ayakui. Ayakui, skip Lowry now. And give a minute to have everybody join. I'm glad to be back live from our North Coast Redwoods District at a place that's currently and only recently been called Patrick's Point State Park. Um, we have a Yurok village who's that's always been here and the name of that village is Sue Meg. Sue Meg. So if you can say Sue Meg, that's the name of this whole place that I'm going to show you right now, a little part of it. Um, and that name's older than all the other names that this place has been known of as since. So I'm going to show you around where I'm at. I'm in a spruce forest. Here in the north coast. These are spruce trees. These are not old growth. They're second growth. They're actually encroaching on an ancient prairie that Sumag was located in. It was a, it's a, it was a village, a seasonal village kind of. Um, There's always people living there, but it got really big. Um, lots more people showed up when certain things on the ocean came to harvest, when it was time to harvest them. So it was known as like a very crucial, important place to trade stuff from inland uh, with stuff from the, the ocean. So I'm just going to walk. I can't figure out how to switch my camera around. So I got to do this like this. I'm going to, we're going to walk into the village together. So this is coming from our visitor center through our spruce forest and heading toward this. This is a recreated Yurok village. It's a recreation. So it's not an original village site. Um, there are no original structures left from pre-contact. Uh, the 65 flood and the Klamath River wiped out one of the last original houses, old Indian houses that was on the property my great-grandmother and my grandmother were born on. Uh, it's a place called Peck Juan on the Klamath River. But here, we're going to come out into a little clearing now, and I want to welcome you to the Sumag Village. So in 1990, this place was recreated, it was finished. It took 80 years of relationship building with um, the tribal communities and California state parks. And so this place is really unique in all of California. Uh, it was decided to be here. There's a long story behind that. But in 1990, it was completed by two groups of Yurok men uh, who were contracted to learn and, and split the redwood planks. So we're going to be looking a little bit at some redwood house structures here so this is a living house i'm coming up to notice the round door let me see how do i get this to work for me and not against me there we go i guess uh so round door big structures not we didn't um move around we didn't migrate we didn't take our houses down and move we had permanent locations and they were built really strong. You can notice the lashings up here. Uh, there's a really cool, unique process to gather and make this rope. And I can go into a little bit of that more on another Facebook page. I'm just gonna give you a general tour of the structures that we have here. We have three living houses. That's what this one is. Um, and they're tied together with hazel rope. And it takes about 50 hazels per house. So three houses times 50, that's 150 hazel ropes. You'd have to be able to go out and harvest and then make um, every couple years to keep your house and bind it together. You can see now on this lower one, there is nylon rope. So it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of uh, knowledge on how to go get the, the hazel rope at the right, or the hazel at the right time of the year. Um, how to create the rope with it uh, Hazel grows right next to poison oak. So if you get poison oak, it's kind of a treacherous <laughs> It can be very dangerous to go get hazel if you have uh, allergies to poison oak and so um, Yeah, it takes a lot of work to take care of a house just like now and these structures are What we always had built our houses like there's a creation story about This is what we were given. This was the design that uh, the creator in the world said, this is how, how Europe people are supposed to build their houses. 
and how to treat the redwood tree that they use to build their houses. And so we don't believe like, oh, we started with the above ground house and then we evolved and evolved. It's like this was the way it was set up for us because um, our culture um, was purposeful in this place, in this world. Had a, It was meant to be here in relationships. So we're going to move to another house over here. So you can see the, the, the spruce forest opened up and we're in a nice clearing. And traditionally they would keep our clearings open using fire. It's one of our, our main tools, uh, sharpest tool in the shed we say is fire. Um, and you know, natural resource management systems, logging companies, even state parks, national parks are just now um, relearning how to utilize fire in the correct way and build it, rebuilding the relationship that was severed um, in the early years of um, Euro, Im Euro immigration to this area. So here we have a sweat house. It is subterranean a little bit. Um, it's made again out of redwood planks. You can notice there's a split canoe that's used as the, the ridge line there. Now the sweat house is really important to Yurok culture for a number of reasons. One main one is that that's what the men would use to keep themselves in balance and in tune so that they could be the best they could possibly be for their community. So sweat house culture was uh, really, really important to the men in the Yurok communities. Uh, women had their own stuff that that's not for me to talk about. Uh, I hope our other interpreters can share some if they can or want to about um, their aspects and their balance. But here you'll notice there's an exit. This is the, what I've always known as the exit. And you come around here, or no, the entrance, this, excuse me, that would be like the in and out. There's differences. Uh, a lot of people talk about this opposite. Um, but here is, it's kind of like a well, it's down in there. There's a hole in the redwood, just like the house that you were at over there. Um, there's a redwood door that's a hole. And from what, what I gather and from what I know is that would be the exit because you come out, it's kind of like your rebirth. Every morning you come out of your house, it's a new beginning, um, it's a new day, and so getting the light, better light here. Um, the sweat house, they would do a dry sweat, it was, it was not the hot rocks with water um, and steam, it was just a, a, a wood coal sweat, so it would be hot and, and dry heat, not the wet steam that um, are, you might be familiar with in saunas and stuff. So we're gonna look over my shoulder here. You'll see a, another structure. I'm gonna walk around to it. Today, we're not gonna go in any of the houses. I'll take you inside the houses later. But here at Patrick's Point, or Sumag Village, it's the correct name for it. Uh, we have three living houses, one non-operational sweat house, the one that I show you for our guests to come look in and explore. But we also have a specifically guarded uh, sweat house that is used during our ceremonies. And this structure right here is called our brush dance house. And you'll notice it's got like um, a ramp walkway that goes down inside. And it, this is literally a house, oops, a house that has been taken apart for a spiritual purpose, uh, a reason. And we hold ceremonies here every year because um, our cultures uh, survived genocide and it survived massive violent oppression and right now it is a beautiful thriving um, well-developed uh, cultural resource and cultural existence um, which it always has been it always will be it always is that's kind of the name of this place Sumeg, from why I've been taught and so we hold ceremonies here and the community comes and we dance together and we pray and we sing and we heal. Um, we create a beautiful world and, and I'll talk a little bit more about ceremonies on another Facebook post. You can see behind me there's a Ramada kitchen that they have designed. So we have um, food is a big important part of, our, of every ceremony. And the host, the Iraq people host this dance here. We use that 
that shelter back there has a full cookware and we open that up and we cook for everybody that comes to the dance and so everybody's fed um, fed well so I don't know if we have any questions so far I see that we got hi Robin hi Lauren Lorena and Bud again great to see you my friend Kim and Jim great I don't know if uh, all right, any questions so far? Hi, Braid. I don't know if it's Brad or Braid. I can't see the glares bad. Yeah, the significance of the round door. That's a great question. So um, I should run back over there. And so there's a misconception that native people are primitive, right? You hear that? They, they talk about us in books and in lore and in Hollywood, like, like we didn't have technology, we're lower on this scale of evolution, which is actually opposite. Technology is just now catching up to some of the ingenious indigenous technologies that have existed for 10,000 years plus. Like they can't even date our culture with the technology they have. Carbon dating can only date us like 10,000. That's the, that's the farthest back they can see us. We know we've been here since time immemorial. That's our stories, that's our culture, and the relationship that we had with the wood, uh, the redwood tree, and the animals that also have a relationship with the redwood tree is why this door is round like that. And it is a form of indigenous technology and ingenuity and sophistication. And uh, so on my patch here, California State Parks, that's a grizzly bear. Sadly, California grizzly bears are extinct due to disrespect and mass exploitation of their their world, their neighborhood. Well, this door here is a grizzly proof door. It's low, it's small, they have a hump on their back that they cannot fit through this door. Their anatomy does not allow them to enter our houses. So that is a form of technology. So we had technology. It's also designed in a way that reflects, like I said, coming out of, you know, when we're born, we are birthed new, and every day we come out of our, our homes, and we're thankful, it's uh, glad to wake up, and uh, every day is a new day, so it's, it, it has some um, honoring of the power of the female, and that we all come from that cosmic creation, and when we come out this door every day, we ask ourselves, how can we help this community? How can I help this cosmic creation be in balance with the world so that we're always in existence and uh, in a balance? So the door is also tied to um, a pre uroc uh, physical Yurok um, existence. And when the animals and the, the trees at one point could talk to each other when the world was being set up before humans to come be a part of uh there's a there's a story about the the red-headed woodpecker the coco now in our language the peleated woodpecker and his little cousins and that they they helped us come into this world and they live in a little house that they have a door and so we revere and honor the red-headed woodpecker um due to this understanding of time before humans and how they helped us come into this world they are here to be in relationship with us and us to them and we learn a lot about what it is to be kind of um, a responsible person in this environment in this um, geographic space with all of the animals here and that woodpecker lives in a hole it comes out of the hole just like that and so do we so it shows the ties kind of between people and place